Jeff TV, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, please share this video, support your boy, support good content at all times, all social media is in the description box, and please hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when I drop that heat, this was a fight that was under the radar, but it was a great damn fight, 140 pound WBO champion of the world, Maurice Hooker, got off the canvas in the second round, to stop Alex Salcedo in the seventh round by TKO. It was a hell of a fight, man. It was a hell of a fight. It was a fight that I didn't talk about on the channel. And I'm mad that I didn't talk about it because this is one of my type of fights. One of them under the radar, just real gritty, nobody really talking about it type fights. And, I mean, it, it really fit the billing. It really did fit the billing. Maurice Hooker, I mean, basically, I mean, he, he's really showing his worth as not only a fighter, but as a champion. But let me give you guys a little bit of background. So we all know that the World Boxing Super Series is going down at 140 pounds. Now, the reason why Maurice Hooker is not in the World Boxing Super Series is because Alex Salcedo was the mandatory for Maurice Hooker. And... Basically, Alex Salcedo is Bob Arum's guy. He's top rank. And basically, Bob Arum pulled some strings and said, hey, you know, I know he wants to get in the tournament, but my guy is the mandatory. He deserves a shot at the title. And with the WBO, whenever a champion fights the mandatory and it basically goes to like a purse bid, the champion is supposed to get 75% of the purse. So... Maurice Hooker made over a million dollars for this fight. And I think Alex Salcedo made about three, four hundred thousand. So it was a lot of money in the pot for this particular fight. So Maurice Hooker basically was like, shit, over a million dollars? Hell yeah, I'm not going to join the tournament. I'm just going to go fight Alex Salcedo in his hometown. And this is the marks of a champion. This is the the telltale sign of a champion, a guy that can face adversity, overcome it, and then triumph after that. It was a great job on Maurice Hooker, but basically breaking down the fight, Alex Salcedo, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I don't have a problem with him as a fighter. I have a problem with his style, and let me let me get into that. Alex Salcedo's style is is outdated. It's outdated. Let me let me get the why I say that. You know how Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, Pernell Whitaker, guys like that, they always say the phrase, the name of the game is to hit and not get hit. A style like Alex Salcedo, he has a style where it's basically Hit, and I don't mind getting hit. That's Alex Salcedo's style. Hit, and I don't mind getting hit. You know what I'm saying? And when you have that type of style, you're not going to last long in the game. You know what I'm saying? When I look at Alex Salcedo, to be perfectly honest with you, I see Brandon Rios. I see Brandon Bam Bam Rios at the end of the day. And that style works for some guys. That style can cause a problem to some guys but when you facing top level elite level guys that style more times than not is gonna fail it's, it's absolutely gonna fail now Alex Salcedo he started off strong he got a knockdown in the second round Maurice Hooker got up composed himself and worked his way back into the fight he didn't try to get it all in, in one round or in one shot you could see him pacing himself trying to get himself back together and Maurice Hooker was just, I mean, jab straight right hand. Jab straight right hand all night. Couldn't miss it. Couldn't miss it. And the thing that was beautiful about the, the jab and the straight right hand, and this is what Mikey Garcia does. When he throws the jab, he, he throws it to where it almost like blocks your vision almost. Like he's using it to 
distract you almost. And then here comes the right hand. And he was throwing it from all different angles. He was throwing it straight, looping shots, throwing it at an angle. Maurice Hooker was giving you everything that you wanted to see in a skilled boxer. And he hit Alex Salcedo with the money shots in the seventh round and got Alex Salcedo up out of here. Now, I know that Maurice Hooker is not a big name in boxing, but I and this may not be a popular opinion, but Maurice Hooker has got to be in the top five in terms of like fighters of the year. He has to be in the top five because he had to go to Terry Flanagan's hometown out of the country to win the WBO title in his last fight, and I think that was in June. And then he had to go to Alex Salcedo's hometown in Oklahoma City and defend his title, and he's the champion. And on top of that, he couldn't get into the World Boxing Super Series because Bob Arum flexed his muscle and got his guy to mandatory. And Maurice Hooker was like, well, I'm not going to give up my title just to be in the World Boxing Super Series when I got one point something million waiting for me. You understand what I'm saying? So... Maurice Hooker's had two big time victories in guys in the other guys' hometown. As far as I'm concerned, off the top of my head, Maurice Hooker is definitely in the top five in terms of fighter of the year. This was a great victory for Maurice Hooker. And for Alex Salcedo, you know, he he fought a spirited fight, but he burned a lot of energy in the beginning trying to get Maurice Hooker up out of there. And you can't do that when you at this championship level. Like, if you're going to do that, you better get him out of here because if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. But hopefully he comes back. Hopefully he not changes his style, but basically um, work on angles a little bit and make sure he's not in the in his opponent's wheelhouse damn near 90% of the time. And that's the problem that I have with his type of style. It doesn't matter if you show head movement, body movement, and you're trying to be defensively responsible. If you're in the guy's wheelhouse all the time, eventually they're going to touch you. Eventually they're going to touch you at the end of the day. But big win by Maurice Hooker. This was a really, really good fight on ESPN. Like it wasn't primetime, primetime, but it was on a Friday. It was late on the East Coast, and I'm on the East Coast. But this was a great fight. Um, hopefully Maurice Hooker can get some of these guys that's in the World Boxing Super Series. Hopefully Alex Salcedo will just go back to the drawing board and become better. And also listen to his trainer too. Also listen to his trainer because his trainer was, was giving him some jewels in the corner. And he just wasn't following the instructions at the end of the day, man. But, you know, it's a learning experience. And hopefully Alex Salcedo can come back. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. G5 Jeff TV. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Please share this video. Support your boy. Support good content at all times. I appreciate y'all. Peace.